this tall, good-looking guy with beautiful blue eyes came over and asked me to dance. Suzanne and Ed first meet when they're both 19. The local college girls were roped into coming and dancing with us, and we thought that was a great idea. He, a dashing Air Force Academy flyboy, she, a part-time model, and soon-to-be teacher. So they fall madly in love and live happily ever after, right? Not quite. I was hoping I'd see him again, but we just, you know, um, the years went by, 10 years went by. A decade of teaching for her, flying for him. But I always remembered her, and I always thought of her. Then comes a war. I volunteered for Vietnam. Combat tends to make a man focus on what's important, and Ed can't get the girl from the dance out of his mind. I wrote a letter to Suzanne. Uh, I had no idea where she was. Suzanne just happens to be teaching close by in the Philippines. They reunite. And this time, instant sparks. <laughs> Both 29, they decide to marry and live happily ever after, right? Not quite. Uh, Suzanne later said, I'm the only man who ever stood her up on a date. And I claim I had good reason. Because <laughs> they shot my airplane out from underneath me. Flying over the jungle of Laos, Ed is shot down. He lives through the crash, but is soon captured and becomes a prisoner of war. Oh, she was with me the whole time. I thought of her all the time. Suzanne didn't know what to think. All she had were the words in a letter Ed had written before he left. I love this woman with all my mind and soul. I would do anything t in this world to be near her. Suzanne is devastated. I waited for four and a half years, and then the list came out with the POWs, and he wasn't on it, so I assumed he was dead. Suzanne moves on with her life, marries another man. Just six days after the wedding, Ed Leonard is freed. Five years a captive, there he is, moments after liftoff from Vietnam, coming back to life. It's wonderful to be here. It just, it, it just, it, it, it's just, what can any man say? The whole town of Winlock, Washington, welcomes their boy home with a parade. Suzanne is not there. Maybe she had waited. I could not reasonably expect it, but I was alive. When he learns of her marriage, Ed moves on with his life. And then 10 more years went by. Suzanne's marriage doesn't work out, and she decides to contact Ed. But this time, she's the one who's too late. Ed is engaged. So I married the other woman. And I thought that was the end of it. So I went on with my life. And then 10 more years went by. This time, Ed's marriage doesn't work out. When a mutual friend calls to tell him Suzanne has cancer, he stops in just to say hello. When I took one look at her uh, and decided, yeah, I think we ought to be married. <laughs> so they live happily ever after, right? Not quite. She was engaged. <laughs> Well, of course she was engaged. I mean, this is us, right? So I prayed and, and asked for wisdom, and, and then I knew that I loved him, and I'd loved him since we were 19. Astoria, Oregon. Hello. Hello. Suzanne beats the cancer and finally gets her man, 36 years after they met. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Ed and Suzanne Lynch. <laughs> Both in their mid-50s, they giggle like 19-year-olds, and they live happily ever after, right? You're going to have written, you got lipstick all over That's all good. <laughs> right. Well, it's so nice, because I'm 72, and he says I look like I'm 19. She does. <laughs> when I look at her, I see a 19-year-old girl. I see a 19-year-old girl. <laughs>